Good morning. Welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. I am Ashwarya Kapoor with you. First up, the headlines. Prime Minister Modi to lead uh, BJP's campaign in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand addresses uh, Vijay Sankalp rallies in Amroha, Saharanpur, and Dehradun. Amit Shah to address rallies in Arunachal, Assam, and Manipur. Rahul Gandhi in Maharashtra, Priyanka Gandhi in Ghaziabad, Mayawati to campaign for SP-BSP candidates in Nagpur, Mamata Banerjee to lead the TMC's charge in Assam. Middlemen in Augusta Westland chopper scam case, uh, Christian Michel says kickbacks paid to defence officials, bureaucrats and UPL leaders low role of more individuals under the scanner as he discloses more abbreviations in the budget sheet congress denies charge advani's blog perfectly sums up bjp's essence of nation first party next self last says prime minister modi Advani's blog says BJP regards those who disagree with the party not as enemies but only as adversaries. And A Shatla Kidambi Srikanth advances to men's singles quarter final of the Malaysia Open to take on China's reigning Olympic champion Cheng Long today. In the women's singles PV Sindhu crashes out of the tournament. First up, let's get you all the news related to the upcoming Assembly and Lok Sabha elections. Scrutiny of nominations for the third phase of Lok Sabha elections will be held today. Voting will take place uh, in the third phase on 23rd of April in 115 seats spread across 14 states. BJP Chief Amit Shah from Gandhi Nagar and Congress President Rahul Gandhi from Vayanad in Kerala are among the prominent candidates. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will lead BJP's campaign in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand today. He will address the party's Vijay Sankalp rally in Amroha and Saharanpur in Uttar Pradesh and Dehradun in Uttarakhand. UP's uh, Saharanpur and Uttarakhand's uh, Dehradun will vote on 11th of April in the first phase, while polling in Amroha will take place on 18th of April in the second phase. UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath will be present at the Saharanpur rally, along with the BJP's candidates from Noida, Union Minister Mahesh Sharma, VK Singh from Ghaziabad, and Raghav Lakhanpal from Saharanpur. With just a few days left for the Lok Sabha elections to begin, all the parties are fielding their star campaigners to cover maximum ground. BJP President Amit Shah will address election rallies in Arunachal Pradesh, Assam and in Manipur. And in Arunachal Pradesh, the BJP chief will hold a public meeting in the Changlang district, polls to 57 assembly seats and two parliamentary constituencies of Arunachal Pradesh, will be held simultaneously on 11th of April. Amit Shah will also address rallies in Assam and in Manipur's uh, Thobal district. And uh, Congress President Rahul Gandhi will uh, campaign in Maharashtra today. He will hold a two-hour interaction with the students at the Bharatiya Vidya Peet uh, campus in Pune. Rahul Gandhi will also address public rallies in Chandrapur and in Vardha. Seven Lok Sabha constituencies from Vidarbha region are going to polls on 11th of April. Congress in charge for Eastern Uttar Pradesh, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, will also hold a roadshow in Ghaziabad today. And Bahujan Samaj Party Chief Mayawati will hold a public rally in Nagpur. The BSP is contesting Lok Sabha elections in Maharashtra in alliance with the Samajwadi Party. Nagpur, remember, will vote in the first phase on 11th of April. And TMC Chief and West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee will campaign in Assam today. 
She will address a rally in uh, Dhubri to, to canvas for uh, the party's uh, Lok Sabha candidates in the state. She will be accompanied by senior party leaders as well as cabinet ministers from the West Bengal government. BJP President Amit Shah campaigned for his party in Andhra Pradesh on Thursday. Addressing a rally in Guntur, Amit Shah hit out at the state chief minister Chandra Babu Naidu. Calling him an opportunist, Amit Shah said that the TDP chief uh, changes colours as and when it suited him. He also listed the achievements of uh, the BJP-led NDA government in the last five years. Narendra Modi Sarkar, ek aur to pure desh ka vikas karne ke liye, it paas saal ke andar, dheer saare kaam kiye. Andhra Pradesh ka vikas karne ke liye, dheer saare kaam kiye. Aur dousri aur, desh ki suraksa ke liye bhi, atank vadiyo ko majboot, mood, tord javaab dene ka kaam, and the BJP president also held a road show in Vishakhapatnam. And DDP chief and Andhra Pradesh chief minister N. Chandra Babu Naidu addressed an election rally in Gidalu town of Andhra Pradesh on Thursday. At the rally, he appealed to the voters to vote wisely. He said that if his party comes to power again, then the state will be in safe hands. BJP's candidate from Amethi, Union Minister Smriti Irani, has questioned Congress President Rahul Gandhi over his decision to contest from two seats in the Lok Sabha elections. Addressing a rally in Amethi on Thursday, Smriti Irani said that Rahul Gandhi has duped the people and deliberately neglected farmers. She said that the Congress ruled the country for 55 years but never tried to connect uh, the farmers with science. Remember, Rahul Gandhi filed his nomination from the Vayanad seat in Kerala on Thursday in, additional, in addition to his uh, traditional stronghold of uh, Amethi in Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> क्या कांग्रेस के नेता राहुल गांधी में सामर्थ्य नहीं था कि खाद के एक रैक आपको दिलवा दें सामर्थ्य था लेकिन जानबूझ के अमेठी के गरीब किसान परिवारों को विकास से दूर रखा गया ताकि अमेठी का किसान जीवन भर उनके सामने हाथ फैलाकर गिड़गिड़ाता रहे News from West Bengal, where uh, stepping up uh, her poll offensive, uh, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee on Thursday asserted that she will no never allow the National Register of Citizens in West Bengal as was being proposed by the BJP. Addressing an election rally in Kooch Bihar district where polling will be held on 11th of April in the first phase, she also claimed that it was her TMC government that had resolved the six-decade-old enclave issue with Bangladesh in 2015. In more election related news, the Election Commission on Thursday informed that for the total uh, 188 Lok Sabha seats in the first and in the second phase, there are 3,954 candidates in the free, out of which there are 216 women candidates. According to the Election Commission, till now, 1,618 crore rupees liquor and many items have been seized under the violation of the Model Code of Conduct. The EC has also provided the facility of e-postal ballot for about 18 lakh service voters in the elections. Apart from this, the Election Commission has asked all the state election officers to upload affidavits and other documents of the candidates online within 24 hours during the Lok Sabha elections. An action would be taken against responsible officials if the guidelines are not followed. As a first phase, we are giving the information about what all MCC violation cases have been taken cognizance by the ECI at ECI level from 10th of March and continuously now you would be seeing the update being made available to you. 
and it is not only an information you will be able to download what is the complaint if any notice is issued the notice copy also you would be able to download from there and if it is decided finally what is the final decision copy also you would be able to see News from Arunachal Pradesh. The Election Commission on Thursday said that it was looking into the recent seizure of 1.8 crore rupees cash in Arunachal Pradesh. The Chief Electoral Officer of the state has uh, submitted a detailed report to the Election Commission after the cash was recovered from two vehicles passed at a, parked at a guest house in Arunachal Pradesh's East Siang district on Wednesday. The exact details of the case are yet to be ascertained. Now a special report. Migration in the hill state of Uttarakhand is one of the main election issues that the ruling BJP will be facing in the upcoming Lok Sabha polls. While the BJP says that the state is witnessing reverse migration, the Congress claims that the migration issue still remains. Our correspondent Ravinder Singh Shuran brings us this report. Ever since its formation in 2000, Uttarakhand has been combating its biggest challenge in migration. The National Human Rights Commission has also expressed concern over the growing number of people leaving the state. The BJP came to power in the state with the promise of tackling the issue. But Chief Minister Trivendra Singh Rawat claims the problem is not as grave as it was believed. Jo Bharat Mala Prayojna hai, uske antargat 700 किलोमीटर की जो हमारी सीमांत की सड़कें हैं उनका हो रहा है भारत जो सेतु भारतम योजना है उसके अंतर्गत हमको अनेक पुल मिले हैं एग्रीकल्चर के क्षेत्र में 1500 करोड़ का हमको ऑर्गेनिक के लिए एक पैकेज मिला है 700 करोड़ का हमको परंपरागत खेती के लिए मिला है 3340 करोड़ का एक पैकेज हमको समेकित सहकारी कृषि कृषि के लिए हमको मिला है तो इन सब चीजों से देखिए जब गांव में रोजगार मिलेगा तो पलायन रुकेगा होम स्टे की योजना हमने राज्य में लागू की है और हमने ये भी तय किया कि 2020 तक हम 5000 होम स्टे राज्य में तैयार करेंगे द चीफ मिनिस्टर सेज द स्टेट इज इन फैक्ट विटनेसिंग रिवर्स माइग्रेशन ही असर्टेड दैट अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ यूथ्स आर क्विटिंग देयर जॉब्स इन सिटीज लाइक मुंबई एंड दिल्ली एंड रिटर्निंग टू उत्तराखंड फॉर वर्क in 2017 the human rights commission held the state government and its policies responsible for migration in uttarakhand it said in the 16 years of the state's formation 3000 villages had turned into ghost villages sarkar ne na rozgar dene ka kaam kiya na palayan rokne ka kaam kiya jo sabse bada mahatvapurna tha harish rao ji ke karyakal mein palayan rokne par ek karya yojana hui thi कि हम निश्चित तौर पर गाढ़ गदेरों से ऊर्जा का स्रोत पैदा करेंगे हम हरियाली के तौर पर हम पेड़ पौधे लगा करके वहाँ के लोगों को रोजगार देंगे हमने कहा था हमारा गांव हमारी सड़क के रूप में हम वहाँ विकास करेंगे तो वो इस सरकार ने ठंडे बस्ते में कर दिया चीफ मिनिस्टर रावत क्लेम्स His government is working to end migration with initiatives like providing better health facilities and even connecting remote villages to hospitals. According to him, the state government is also providing more job opportunities by introducing promotion of organic vegetables, fruits and plants. Ravindra Singh Shyoran's report for Rajya Sabha TV. On the Samaj News, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has complimented a senior BJP leader L K Advani on his recent blog post. Prime Minister Modi said that L K Advani has perfectly summed up the BJP's true essence. Modi further said that greats like L K Advani have strengthened BJP's core values. Senior BJP leader L K Advani has written a blog post ahead of the BJP's Foundation Day on 6th of April. Address to the BJP party workers Advani in the blog titled Nation First Party Next Self Last said that his party has never regarded those who disagreed with it politically as anti-national or enemies but only as adversaries in a blog written almost 5 years after he wrote the last piece on his web page Advani said that the BJP has been committed to the freedom of choice of every citizen at personal 
as well as political level. In the piece, uh, the veteran leader has also urged the party to look back, look ahead and look within and stressed on democracy and democratic traditions within. And uh, on to some other news, the Enforcement Directorate or the ED says that it has unearthed the involvement of several more persons linked to the VVIP chopper scandal. The agency has uh, issued a summons to more individuals for questioning. Now, this comes as uh, the Enforcement Directorate on Thursday filed a supplementary charge sheet against uh, Christian Michel, the alleged middleman arrested in the Augusta Westland chopper scam before a Delhi court. The charge sheet was also filed against two firms, Global Services, FZE and Global Traders, and one of its directors, David Sims. Now, Sims and uh, Mikhail are both directors of the two firms. The charge sheet also says that a part of the kickback was paid to defense officials, bureaucrats and important political persons of the ruling party when the deal was being struck. The document also says that uh, Christian Michel has uh, further disclosed various abbreviations that were used in the budget sheet which contains the details of the payments made to the officials, bureaucrats and political persons. The ED also says that Christian Michel is understood to have identified the initials AP as Ahmed Patel. Michel was arrested by the ED on 22nd of December last year after his extradition from Dubai. He is among the three alleged middlemen who are being probed in the chopper scam by the ED and the CBI. The others uh, are uh, Guay Guaido Harshke and Carlo Carosa. And the special judge Arvind Kumar said that he will take a cognizance of the ED's charge sheet on 6th of April. And we'll take a very short break here, but uh, here is some very important information from Monday. You can watch the breakfast news at a new time at 9.30 a.m. every morning. So don't forget to tune in at this new time. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back after the break. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Thursday said that the BJP-led NDA will continue with the fiscal prudence and lower tax rate if it is elected back to power. Speaking at the CII annual general meeting, Arun Jaitley said that the GST Council has cut tax rates on consumption items to 12 or 18 percent from the highest tax slab of 28 percent and lowering rate on cement is next on agenda. He said that the India's growth has stabilized between 7 to 7.5% and irrespective of global trends, domestic consumption is going to increase. Over the last five years, the government did not increase the tax rates and in some cases, in fact, doubled the tax base and increased tax collection. Over the last five years, essentially either on the direct or the indirect side, we didn't increase taxes. In fact, post the GST, with almost every meeting, we bring certain segment down, depending on and measuring it with the revenue collection. Compliances have improved. On the income tax side, we did the same. So while bringing it down, we had two methods in mind. One start strengthening this so-called middle class or the new middle class. 
An India on Thursday said that Pakistan has not addressed uh, the concerns that it had raised with the country over Kartarpur corridor. Reacting to India's decision to postpone the talks, uh, the Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Ravish Kumar said that India has sought a clarification from Pakistan on certain issues, but Islamabad is yet to satisfy New Delhi on the matter. Remember, on 29th of March, uh, New Delhi had postponed the talks on the corridor, which were scheduled for 2nd of April, objecting to Pakistan's decision to appoint a pro-Khalistani leader to a committee to assist Indian pilgrims to Gurdwara Darbar Sahib in Kartarpur. We had also shared our concerns on reports that controversial elements, they have been appointed by Pakistan to a committee which was to be associated with Kartarpur Corridor. We are yet to receive a response from Pakistan and therefore that was the reason why we decided to, to postpone uh, the meeting. You are aware that uh, we have offered to hold the technical level discussions um, to finalize other aspects of, of the corridor and uh, as and when Pakistan responds to that offer that uh, the technical level talks will take place. The top international focus now, US President Donald Trump on Thursday hinted that the US and China may be inching closer to finalizing a deal to end a year-long trade impasse between the world's two largest economic superpowers within weeks. Speaking in the Oval Office, uh, the US President said that a trade agreement uh, could be announced within the next four weeks or maybe less or maybe more, whatever it takes, describing the possible agreement as very monumental. Now, this came after his meeting at the White House with the Chinese Vice Premier Liu He, who has been in talks with the U.S. negotiators this week in Washington. However, Donald Trump also acknowledged that the two sides hadn't reached a deal on tougher issues tied to intellectual property, tariffs and enforcement. U.S. and Chinese negotiators on Wednesday began their ninth round of talks to resolve the dispute over U.S. allegations that Beijing is using a predatory tactics including cyber theft in a campaign to challenge U.S. technological dominance. China has denied the allegations. Washington wants uh, sweeping changes to China's economic and trade policies, while Beijing wants Donald Trump to lift expensive sanctions on Chinese goods. We've negotiated out some of the toughest points, really the tougher points, and, uh, but we have some ways to go, and I think we have a very good chance of getting there. We have a number of things, but we've also agreed. We've agreed to far more than we have left to agree to. And in fact, I would say, I think I can say that some of the toughest things have been agreed to. We have some things that are actually easier right now that we're, that we're doing. But it's a very, very, uh, using a word that I don't like using too often, but it's a very, very comprehensive deal. Sports news now is uh, Shatla Kidambi Shrikanth has made it to, to the men's uh, singles quarterfinals. But world number six, PB Sindhu, went down in straight games in women's singles competition at the Malaysia Open on Thursday. Kidambi Shrikanth cruised into the quarterfinals of the tournament with the 11-21 win over Thailand's uh, Kosit. He will uh, take on China's reigning Olympic champion Chen Long today. However, PB Sindhu was knocked out of the tournament in the pre-quarter finals after she lost to Korea's uh, Seung Ji Hyun in straight games. Sindhu had lost to the Korean in the first round of the All England Championships as well as uh, 2018 Hong Kong Open as well. And men's doubles player of uh, pair of uh, Manu Atri and B Sumit Reddy also failed to cross the opening hurdle. The mixed doubles pair of uh, Pranav Jerry Chopra and N Sinki Reddy also bowed out of the tournament. And well, that is the wrap on this edition of uh, Breakfast News. But here is a reminder once again that from Monday, you can watch the Breakfast News at a new time at 9.30 a.m. every morning. So don't forget to tune in at that time. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching.